where is the NDA? So I was going to say that Olivia Wilde is having a bad week, but I feel like she's actually having kind of a bad year. Her film, Don't Worry Darling, has had more drama off screen than it has on screen. And it's a pretty dramatic film. So the latest news with Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis is that their former nanny has given an interview to the Daily Mail, which is a publication in the UK. And in the interview, she basically goes on to talk about some very juicy, I guess, information about Olivia and Jason and when exactly Olivia broke things off with Jason and in relation to when she started dating Harry, when who she met on Don't Worry Darling. And all this information is coming out about the fact that Olivia probably was still with Jason when she got with Harry. Potentially, Jason was stop trying to win her back and stop her from going to Harry one night and laying down on the ground in front of her car because she was trying to bring Harry this salad with this super, very infamous salad dressing. But during all this, I'm like, where is the NDA? How is it that this nanny or former nanny is giving an interview with a publication? Like, didn't Olivia and Jason have her sign an NDA? Or if not, a separate NDA, then wasn't there a confidentiality provision in her employment agreement? So of course, as an attorney in Hollywood for the last 15 years, I have represented talent actors like Olivia and Jason. And if I was their attorney, I would probably have already sent cease and desist letter, which I bet she already has, the former nanny that is, and probably that's why she hasn't spoken since the interview. So today I thought I would discuss what an NDA is, kind of the different provisions that might be found in an NDA and kind of how it would play out in the whole Jason and Olivia drama that's happening right now. So what is an NDA? An NDA stands for non-disclosure agreement, and usually a would be used in a couple of different situations. The most common one is for an employment agreement. It's usually signed by an employee as they are about to enter into an employment situation with their employer. Sometimes it's used in certain deals like M&As when a company is looking to be acquired or they're looking for investors and they want to bring investors in and they want to make sure they're protecting their trade secrets or business plans or details and financials of the company. And then within the NDA, there are usually two parties. There's the disclosing party and then there's the receiving party. So let's just stay with the employment agreement because this is what we're going to be discussing for with the former nanny of Olivia and Jason. So the former nanny would be the receiving party and Jason and Olivia would be the disclosing party. Now, there is a question whether or not she signed an NDA because the the fact that she gave this interview and divulged very deep secrets of the family it makes me wonder if she had an NDA because I guess in her interview, she talked about the fact that she was hired at first as a temp for the family and then it got converted into a permanent position. So maybe it was a slip up and it slipped through the cracks that she didn't sign an NDA. I mean, it has been known to happen if they're chaotic or kind of not organized. I mean, she did hint that about Olivia. So I am guessing maybe that there is no NDA. There's the disclosing party, there's the receiving party. And usually within the NDA, there will be a provision that talks about what is the confidential information. So in an employment agreement, sometimes it will say, you know, that employee shall not divulge any trade secrets. People definitely cannot work for them and talk about what their trade secrets are. It will define what the confidential information is. There will usually be a term. So commonly, the term could last from one year to 10 years. And if the party has an attorney, the attorney would basically try to push back and try to make that time period as short as possible because the longer it is, the more overbearing it is because more chances that the employee could potentially breach even when they're no longer working for the company. Then there might be an exclusion provision that talks about, well, what is excluded from confidential information definition? And that might be things like that already in the 
the public domain. For instance, in this situation, the fact that Jason and Olivia's children's names are Otis and Daisy, so then that's already in the public domain, so the nanny can't get in trouble for saying their names. Let's say she's talking to her mom and she accidentally revealed the names of the kids. Well, that would be overbearing because the name's already in the public domain. Or the information has been disclosed to the receiving party by a third party, and so therefore it's not covered under the confidential information definition. And then there will be usually a choice of law. It will talk about where, in what state or county, if there is a lawsuit where that will be adjudicated. Usually it, most of the agreements that I see are either in New York or LA. And there might be an arbitration provision where it says that this has to go in front of an arbitrator. Jams is one of the biggest ones that entertainment agreements usually agree to be arbitrated in, at Jams. And I think the last part will be the last provision might cover what happens during a breach. Like what happens if the NDA is breached? And usually the provision says something to the fact that damage to the disclosing party will be irreparable and money damages will be awarded. And what I have to make clear about an NDA is an NDA is a contract. If there's a breach, it is a breach of contract claim. It is a civil matter. You can't go to jail basically for breaching an NDA, but you can potentially be on the hook for large amounts of money. And that could be very broad. It could be something that will be determined by the court or by jury or by an arbitrator. And sometimes there might be a liquidated damages provision within the document, which is very unusual for NDA, but it has happened in one of my prior companies that I worked for. And I worked at Disney and Skydance and BuzzFeed, as well as some big law firms. I was directed to include a liquidated damages in the seven figures because we were working on this top, top secret trilogy film that was so top secret that it involved a very famous director whose films are some of the highest grossing films in history. And basically, we had to make sure that the storyline of the first film and of all the trilogy would not be leaked. And so I was tasked with putting that liquidated damages into the NDA. And it was the first one and the only one that I've ever drafted. And it was a big deal. But courts do not like to give liquidated damages provisions because if it's too broad or too vague and too overbearing, right? If the amount is really, really large, usually that is contested in, in court. The attorney for the receiving party will try to fight against that and say that it's basically unfair. So basically, I think what happened was the former nanny was approached by Daily Mail. She could have been approached by many publications, but I'm not surprised. I think the UK tabloids are very, very aggressive and because Harry Styles is a British citizen, I think it probably wanted this story. And I think they probably made an offer to the former nanny, I would guess in the six figures, if not even the seven figures. And if the nanny was smart or had an attorney, she probably would have asked for an indemnity provision, which means that if she gets sued for this story, then the Daily Mail would have to defend her. And also, I believe some NDAs can be breached if the party who is damaged by the disclosure, if they can be made whole. So for instance, and I don't think this is the case here because I don't think if I was the Daily Mail, I would not agree to this. But let's say the nanny was smart enough to have an attorney and said, well, I think I might get sued for $5 million. And so the Daily Mail said, okay, we will cover you for $5 million if those are the damages. Now, again, this is just my guess of what probably has happened, but it's it's very likely that the nanny was not represented and probably just agreed to this big lump sum, not thinking that she might get sued by Olivia and Jason, which hasn't happened, but I'm sure there were very, very stern letters sent to both the former nanny and to the Daily Mail from probably Olivia and or Jason's litigators telling them to stop talking about the details of their family affair. So what do I think will happen? with the former nanny. I believe probably nothing, nothing from the outside, right? I bet you Olivia and Jason's attorneys have already gone after the nanny, sent her a cease and desist, so telling her not to disclose any more information from the family life. And could they sue? They could potentially. I mean, I think in this situation,
situation, Olivia looks worse. Her reputation probably has been damaged by what the nanny has said. There are allegations here that she potentially cheated on Jason with Harry. You know, they weren't technically married, but this just all makes Olivia look bad, right? And could her reputation be damaged so much that she couldn't get work in the future? Now, one might argue that everything that happened on Don't Worry Darling has caused damage to her reputation. So if an attorney was representing the nanny, that definitely would be the defense. If Olivia's attorney tries to claim, well, the nanny's interview damaged Olivia so that she wasn't able to get more work in the future. I mean, that would be a stretch. You would have to prove that somehow. Olivia would have to prove that in damages. If she decided to sue the nanny, which I don't think she will because this is already like such a PR nightmare and it's already so ugly, for her to go and sue the nanny would just make this a circus. But if Olivia did decide to sue and say, well, these are my damages, right? Like I was supposed to get this next film that I was tapped to to direct or star in, but I lost it because you came out and gave this interview. She could say, well, I was supposed to get 2 million or 5 million. And therefore those are my damages for you breaching this NDA. Again, we don't know if there was an NDA. I think there should be an NDA or at least a confidentiality provision in the employment agreement, in the nanny agreement. But we don't know if there is one. I certainly haven't seen one, but I know most nanny agreements have confidentiality provision. So I think if they're going to let this fade. I think Olivia is trying to do some damage control right now. I think she was, you know, seen walking her dog because the nanny claimed that she gave away her dog for Harry Styles and now she was just seen walking her dog. She gave the recipe for the salad dressing. I think she's trying to diffuse this and hoping that it will go away. I think suing the nanny is a bad idea because that will just try to fan the fires and just keep the story going. She could potentially try to sue the nanny and the nanny because she got this big sum from the Daily Mail. She could try to get the damages from that because usually when someone is sued like a nanny in this situation who probably doesn't have assets, doesn't have a lot of money to their names, like suing somebody like that makes no sense. But if she did get a large sum from doing the interview, they could potentially try to go after her to get that amount. But again, I really think it would be a bad idea and they should just try to let this die and let the next story come up and take over because there are always new stories happening. I mean, Kanye West is certainly occupying a lot of the headlines these days. So that's it. This is Tyler, the Hollywood attorney. Remember, you're one thought away from joy. I will see you next time. Bye.